Uh, let's get into the next section really quickly because, once again, another chess piece over here. The reason why we think we're being dragged into World War III. Antony Blinken says that Ukraine will join NATO. Now, I don't know if this is a deterrent for stopping the Russians on doing something, you know, to what's going on. I, like I've said, I've looked at this before, and I, I can't think of a way that the Russian Federation will allow the Zelensky or any type of government in Kiev that's a puppet of the United States exist. You know, I mean, there's more to just then the death and destruction that they've caused dragging the Russian Federation into this war by threatening to sl completely slaughter the people of Donbass after they already killed 14,000 in eight years. It's totally used peace, tact peace deals like Minsk 1 and 2 as stall tactics to build up their army just to give the weapons to the Nazis. And they keep on furthering their abilities to go attack the, the Russian homeland. I, don't, I can't think of a scenario, fam, in which the Russian Federation wouldn't remove the Kiev government or at least try to do what the United States does, orange color revolution it from the streets using media and whatnot, because obviously Ukraine is one of those countries where they, it's a mixture of Ukrainians, Russians together, and maybe they can get it over that way. I don't know. But I don't know if this is a deterrent, fam, or if this is like, let's go World War Three, because Article 5 means, and Blinken says that Ukraine will be joining NATO under Article 5. This means that an attack on Ukraine will be considered an attack on the United States. If you want World War III, vote Biden in November. Well, David Sachs, uh, you know, there's a lot of things I disagree with you on, a decent amount of things I agree with you on. Uh, I don't know if that necessarily goes away with Donald Trump, but let's listen to Anthony Blinken over here and hear what he has to say. The determination of every country represented here uh, at NATO uh, remains rock solid. Uh, we uh, will do everything that we can. Allies will do everything that they can to ensure that Ukraine has what it needs to continue to deal with Russia's ongoing aggression against Ukraine, an aggression that gets worse uh, with every passing uh, day. Ukraine will become a member uh, of NATO. Uh, our purpose at the summit is to help build a bridge to that membership uh, and uh, to create a clear pathway for, uh, for Ukraine uh, moving forward. So, uh, of course, we believe that Ukraine deserves to be a member of NATO and that this should happen sooner rather sooner sooner rather than later Ukraine so there it is fam now uh article five meaning that if you attack Ukraine you're now attacking the United States it's like that old bat backdraft if you go we go but they're trying to start World War three over here yeah, and, I mean, this was something that a few weeks ago they even said, no, no, Ukraine won't be a part of NATO. That's yeah. not going to happen. And now they're saying, oh, yeah, Ukraine is going to be a part of NATO. And again, that's that's that uh, Russia has said the moment that happens, if Ukraine is a part of NATO, it doesn't matter if you have uh, American forces on the ground. We're going to we're going to go after that the same way we've been going after Ukrainian forces. So, again, a World War Three this way, World War Three via Iran. World War Three via whatever, just wait for Taiwan and and, and China. Yeah. It, it oh, doesn't yeah. matter. We're we're going to go somewhere uh, with a world a global war. I think it is inevitable if they continue acting like this. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it. You can call Do it. Do you negative. think there's a better realistic. chance of us not going to World War Three with Donald Trump than Joe Biden? No. What do you think? It's no. just equal. I, I I literally we could go to uh, who killed Soleimani? Who who? Who was president when Soleimani was killed? That was Donald Trump. Absolutely. And so, I mean, if it's not going to be the uh, Russia Ukraine, I think Trump is just talking and talking and saying that he he's going to act differently than Joe Biden in terms of Ukraine. But I think at the end of the day, he's going to do what needs to be done in terms of the establishment. I don't I don't think that we're going to see a backing off. If we see a backing off. In Ukraine, you're going to see it ramp up somewhere else. And this has been um, said by a lot of uh, Russian analysts here. They don't see a difference. It's not going to matter if Biden is president or Trump is president. They're not even paying attention too much to this election. I mean, I think to a degree, yeah, people are, are tuned in to what's going to happen in the U.S., but they're under no uh, illusion that it's going to change foreign policy wise what the united states does it might change things domestically how the united states proceeds but yeah. foreign policy wise nah 
Here, here, here's the our article from The Hill with some other articles out there, too, as well. Uh, former president said his, his advice to Israeli prime minister, maybe you need to wrap up your conflict in Gaza quickly. Get it done. Wrap it up. Finish up your meal. Eat your dessert. Put the dishes in the sink. It's time. It's over. He, he said this the other day. And I mean, look, <laughs> I don't know if that's better rhetoric than, than Joe Biden, but uh, he does seem to say stuff that just sounds like it would be politically advantageous. Uh, not so much just, you know, <laughs> the other way around. Yeah. And by um, the way, the, li the Libertarian, uh, our good friend Kyle Anzalone, writing for the Libertarian Institute. You can put that up, Jamie. I see you got it ready. Official war, official U.S. official admits Ukraine proxy war is failing to weaken Russia. It is failing to weaken Russia, but yet they're still going along with their plans. And a lot of people admitted this. They, they thought they would bring economic sanctions to their knees. You can just leave the title up really quickly because we're not going to go too far into it. We ain't got much time. We have a long show already. But um, even though the, it, it's backfired on them, fam, in fact, the ruble is now stronger than it was, they're still the going along with their plans. There's still people within Congress that are saying, we got to help out Ukraine. We got to do this right now. We can't stop. We can't falter. It's not just Lindsey Graham. There's a big, a, a pretty strong constituency that wants to do it. Every single Democrat wants to go and help Ukraine, help, help Ukraine as if it's not, they've lost as, as if they haven't lost their sovereignty in 2014. It's just crazy to me. And you'll hear people like Bernie Sanders, you know, Hamas and in the same argument, they're still yelling Hamas. I mean, take your head out of your ass, get your shit together. Wake the hell up. You've been exposed. We can throw all these things out here. They're still pushing forth with this fam, and they don't care. When you're wrong, you stay wrong. Is like the, that's the motto they're going with. 